87% of referred real estate prospects will Google you before they call you. Where, where are you at? What city and state? We're up at Lake Tahoe, uh, just outside of Tahoe. Actually, I don't know the name of this town, <laughs> but uh, we're about a half hour from Tahoe. Cool, buddy. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. But you know, I live in Arcadia. I live. I do. You're we're we're neighbors practically, like exactly 30, 40 minutes away. There you go. There you go. How are things going, dude? Things are going so well. Awesome. Uh, I think the rates changing up and the the consumer, at least in 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 our area, Southern California, um, they it finally they're finally getting it. They understand and they see that the rates are going to stay around here, right? So. Yeah. They're getting it's used been, to it. Yep. It's been really, that has really helped um, our business a lot. We didn't do too bad last year, but we're definitely seeing an uptick uh, already since January. Amazing. So um, thanks, right. uh, thanks for doing this, man. Because one of the things that we're focused on this year is Google. It's like, how can I improve my presence on Google to be able to be in front of more people? And when I am in front of more people, are they understanding the messaging correctly so that I can attract them? Right. Totally. That's great. That's exactly what we're going to focus on. So I think, I think that'll help. I see Prayful. Good afternoon, Simon. Nice hat, brother. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. It's a brilliant tribe, right? Our coaching company. Uh, good morning from Reno. Gail from Reno. Nice to have you here. Where's everybody from? Give me a state. Give me a city. And obviously, I'm out here in Ventura County, California. Scott is not at home. He's in Lake Tahoe. But that's beautiful. Close to Gale in Reno. Yeah. Dude, not too far. Not too far. Mm -hmm. And let's see where everybody's from. Reno, not too far. Uh, Google Local Ads. Yep, yep. We'll get, we'll get, we'll talk about that a little bit. Lisa. Yep, touch on that. Uh, North Carolina. Henderson. Monica, nice to have you. Uh, David from the Bahamas. How's the weather out there, David, in the Bahamas? Carlsbad, California, Arizona, Woodland Hills. Alex, that's right. He's he's not too far from either of us, Scott, Woodland Hills. Very good. Atlanta. I love Boston, Massachusetts. Prayful. Thanks for being on. Virginia Beach, Oklahoma City. Dude, we're all over. I love this. Scott, where do we start when we're looking at Google? Or where, where do you suggest we start based on your experience. So in terms of as a real estate agent, like what should they think be thinking about with Google? Yeah, because I feel like it's, they want to do it. We want to do it, mm -hmm. but yeah. we really don't know where to start with this. Uh, yeah. I, I usually see a lot of opportunities. Here's what I see. And you tell me where to start based on sure. that. I see Google, my business. Mm -hmm. I see reviews. Mm -hmm. I see SEO. Mm -hmm. I see PPC. Mm -hmm. YouTube. Mm -hmm. And now I see Google Bard, right? Right, right. So like, it, yeah, four of those things are one thing in my mind, which is, perfect. which is what you said, Google My Business is Google Business Profile. Now they changed the name. And that is Google. That's the best of these guys showing up when someone looks for them. That's the reviews being housed in the same place. That's their postings and their products and their services and their categories. And it's SEO because it's what's going to get them to rank. You know, a lot of agents and a lot of folks on this call today will be interested in if someone's looking for Carlsbad real estate, I want my my website to be at the top. Well, you're competing against Realtor and Redfin and Zillow and Homelight. Yeah. <laughs> but with your Google business profile, you can get up right onto page one. You can be right at the top and you don't have to pay for that. That's organic. Well, that's what we want, dude. Is that where we would start then? Absolutely. And I have all kinds of stuff to show. I got a slide. Let's go. You wanted to get, we should we get started now? Let's get started. All right. Awesome. Uh, I need someone to let me share my screen. All right. I think you got that. Here we go. Okay. Uh, one sec. And if you have any questions as you're watching, just pop them into the chat or the Q&A and I'll field those for you and throw them over to Scott. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you got and it, man. I'm ready to take notes. All right, awesome. Can you see the greetings board? I got you. All right, I'm going to do a quick greeting. Just give a high level about what we're going to talk about, Tristan. Is that good? And then we'll get into it. Let's go. 
Awesome. So, hey, just so everybody knows who I am, my name is Scott. I'm from Optimize 5. I've spoke with Tristan recently. and We've spoken in the past because I've been in real estate tech forever. And here's what I know about real estate technology people, uh, salespeople like myself, is we call realtors nonstop. You guys get called by us constantly trying to sell you CRMs, <laughs> yes. marketing platforms, digital marketing, uh, uh, strategic uh, farming tools, you name it. But here's what I know for sure. Tell me. All of that tech is buttressed by your online brand and so as we talk about the market shifting back and forth and back to where we want it to be do not take your foot off the gas pedal of your online brand because and i'm going to come back to this in a moment if i go out for dinner tonight with my wife and the other couple says we're moving to ventura and i say you need to work with my friend tristan and i talk about how awesome tristan is and how wonderful of a marketer he is and how well he knows the market. And he's a tough negotiator. When I give them Tristan's phone number, I know, and you all know, they're going to Google him first. Yeah. That's the first thing they're going to do. So I'm going to talk about three stats and then get into the nitty gritty. 73% of consumers choose a business via online search results without ever visiting a website. Hmm. Think about how, that's Isn't that mind blowing? Because crazy every realtor has a website it's either their own website or the index site on their remax page or keller williams or whatever it is but very rarely do people type in www.scottawesomecarlsbadrealtor.com <laughs> right yeah that's true they're just, they're just gonna google his name and what comes up we're gonna talk about that during the presentation yeah. next one 69 percent of consumers only find relevance in reviews that are less than two to three months old so two things about reviews. First of all, you have all been told to get reviews on Zillow or Yelp or Reach150 or Redfin or Facebook and all of these places. And we're going to talk about that. None of those are the places where you should be getting reviews first. But the other part is when I look at a review, if I haven't seen a review for seven months, I wonder if that business is still in business. Also, I bet that a big percentage of you do what I do, which is I filter by bad reviews. So when I'm going to my chiropractor next week, yeah, I Google him, I get the directions, and then I click reviews on Google Business Profile and I sort by negative reviews. And the key mm. piece to this is that if there's a negative review and that business owner has replied to that review amicably, it mm -hmm. neutralizes the review. Oh, interesting, dude. I, well, hold on. On the reviews, I also look for weird reviews where it's like, he was wearing a hat. You know how much I hate hats? I'm like, what? That oh, was my weird. God. <laughs> have like, you read that has nothing to do with this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it really depends on the business. Good point, though. But um, yeah, so weird reviews are fun. Yeah. Um, so we're going to dig into reviews more in a minute. Here's what our whole presentation is built on today. Here's what I spoke with Tristan about when we first met. Here's what the business that I started four years ago is built on. This is an old stat. It's an old NAR stat. It's ancient, actually, in terms of data uh, and data analytics, um, because this is seven years old. So it might as well have been a century ago. 87 87% yeah. of referred real estate prospects will Google you before they call you. It's well into the 90 percentile now. But my question was, after I heard that statistic, is that it? If they look you up and they get their information, is that all they're going to do? So the three pieces of our presentation today, and then I'm going to get us out of this silly PowerPoint presentation and go into some real life uh, uh, web results is we're going to talk about three distinct things. Google business profile used to be called Google My Business. My assumption is that everyone who's on the call today has a Google business profile. If you don't have one, you can go to YouTube after this meeting and just search how to set up Google business profile. What we're going to talk about today is optimization. Why that is key to Google business profile to the best of you showing up and your ability to rank. Then we're going to talk about reviews. We're going to dispel the myth that you should be getting your reviews primarily on Zillow. That is not where you should be getting them. And there's a secret to reviews that a lot of business owners don't know about. And I'm going to share that with you today as well. And I think you'll find it very compelling. Okay. 
And then the last piece is business citations. This is the, not this doesn't sound like the sexiest topic in the world, but I'll tell you, it is an SEO fundamental. And okay. I'm going to share with you what that is. If you worked for a big company like State Farm, their corporate marketing would take care of business citations for your State Farm location in Carlsbad, California. But you are all ICs and this is up to you to do. And so I'm going to share with you what this actually means and how to make it right. Sound good? Awesome. I love this, man. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to get into the, to the internets now. And I went to Zillow, everybody's favorite website. Yeah. And uh, no sarcasm. And I, uh, I went to Pleasanton, California because it's a high volume home area. It's in the Bay area. Um, you know, a, a, a $1.7 million home value uh, area in the Bay. It's a great um, example of what we want to focus on today, which is your online brand. Nobody goes to Zillow looking for a realtor, by the way. They go to Zillow looking for real estate. Isn't that funny? Yeah. And yet, and yet, so many realtors have invested in their brand. And I understand why Zillow was the big player for so long. But if I go to the agent finder on Zillow in the city of Pleasanton, California, and this could be anywhere, this could be in any city in America, in fact, in North America, because they have Zillow in Canada now, and I know we've got somebody on from Ontario on the call, maybe mm -hmm. a few. As I scroll down on the agent finder, this would be page one of Zillow. And so all of these agents you see have quite a few reviews, 280 still, reviews. We still see um, we still see your slide deck. Oh, thank you so much for stopping me. No, no problem. I was going to just keep going here. One sec. Make sure I do that right. Okay. Can you see it now? Got you. If I change pages real quick, Tristan, do you see that? Now I do. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. I'm in the agent finder of Zillow and I'm, I would never go here first, but this is to prove a point on page one of Zillow. We've got all of these realtors with so many reviews, 289 reviews for Tim McGuire, 45 reviews for Dan Carabello and 94 reviews for Jackie. But if someone told me to work with Tim, I wouldn't go here. I would just Google him. And here's what I see. All the links on the left are what you would get with any realtor, but none of that is catching my eye. This is what's catching my eye. And this is where we're getting hyper-focused today. It's Google business profile. I see that. Here's the guy that I met at the open house. Here's his 27 five-star Google reviews. Here's his business name. Think about all of the ways that realtors might call themselves something. They might say Tim McGuire, fantastic Pleasanton real estate agent, but is that a business name? <laughs> no one's going right. to Google that. It's funny. Right, exactly. Or is that a name that Google's going to approve and then decline two months later? So we'll talk about that in a minute. But this guy's name is Tim McGuire, comma, Realtor, which is his designation. And then he's got his team name and his brokerage, right? If I click on his image here, there isn't just one image. There are as many images in the background. In fact, there's so many images. I could keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And I'm going to come back to that in a minute because that is not done typically because people are going to look at them. That is technical. Those are assets attached to this profile and it matters. And I'm going to come back to that in a minute. It's connected to his website. He's got Zillow and Facebook connected. He has products. These are his listings. He has all of his social links attached, a biography, and someone has asked him 11 questions and he's answered all of them. I'm showing you all who are listening to our call today or watching mm -hmm. this because if I come back to the Zillow page and I click on the next person, Dan, if someone told me to work with Dan, I would Google him and there's nothing there. All the links on the left are the same that you got with Tim. But for Dan, there is no Google business profile. Hmm. Now, I'm going to come back to Dan in a minute. The next person I want to look at is Jackie, who's got almost 100 Zillow reviews. Got it. So this is the good. This is the bad. And this is the ugly and not Jackie. Jackie's beautiful, but the Google profile is not. And here's why. This is a picture of a parking lot, or I think it's actually her home. So if someone told me to work with Tim, here's what I see. If someone told me to, to work with Jackie, I see a home. Mm -hmm. I see no reviews. I see no business hours. I see very little on her profile. 
You know what happens there, Scott? Tell me. This is all happening so fast as you're scrolling, as the consumer, right? Right. That you're slowing down for us, but this is how people actually see it, right? So they're like, oh, I'm just going to go right back to Tim. And then it takes maybe like 30 seconds or less for the whole process to happen. You're so right. It's like we have so little time to capture these people. And you told me to work with Tristan and I Googled Tristan. You told me to work with Tim and I Googled Tim. You told me to work with Jackie. And there, an argument to this would be, well, the consumer doesn't know that there needs to be more than this. And I would say, here's the biggest piece to that. My next search is, okay, I've been referred to Jackie. What are their real estate agents are there in Pleasanton, California? Mm. So you've all seen this before. It's called the Google three pack. Yep. This shows up for any business, chiropractor, dentist, whatever. It's a local path. And many of you have asked me and people like me, how do I get onto page one when someone's looking for real estate agents in my town? And you think it's the website, but Realtors been pushed down here and Yelp and Zillow. This is popping up at the top. And these are just Google profiles like Jackie's Google profile. However, Gina mm -hmm. is here because of this. This is. Oh, wow. It's, it's the same thing. That's nice. Dude, do, do, when, well, hold on. If you can go back for us. When mm -hmm. you, um, that one, yeah. If you, when you hovered over Gina's name, it pops up on a map and it, it brought me, it brought a question up from Olga. If, if we cover a larger territory, is it better not to list an address since she works in two states or how does that work? It's a great question. In fact, so this is built for the local business. Mm -hmm. So even though you cover multiple places, you will never rank much further out of the city where your brokerage or your initial location is. So if the Google business profile, you could draw a map and I'll give you a quick example of that by looking at my own business. Oops. So one sec. You'll notice, and this looks a little funky because there's a panel over here that you wouldn't see. It's because I control this profile, but you can see that the area that I work is the entire continental US. And so that's showing the consumer that I work in multiple places. However, ranking outside of the city and state where my business is located on Google Maps is very challenging, especially for a realtor who typically are local or hyper local. Got it. So how do you typically fix that challenge that we have as real estate agents where we cover a large area, right? Typically mm -hmm. it's like a, maybe even two counties and we have a team. So what do we focus on there? It's thinking more about how the consumer might search for you. So if I look for a top, so let's change my search. I want to work with a top real estate agent in i know i'm spelling it wrong but google will figure it out that's that's how it works these days right if i look for top real estate agents in pleasanton now i have a different outcome and i'm showing you this for a reason if you look at the original three pack i just looked for real estate agent gina kim amario now okay. i'm looking for top real estate agents doug gina and kim let's change this to east bay which is a dozen towns in uh in the bay area now I've got different outcomes because these folks have built their profiles to cover a larger area. There are keywords within their profile. So this person is going to rank in Brentwood, California, which is not Brentwood in the LA area. It's Brentwood in the, the Bay. Yep. Yep. And they're, they're uh, showing up outside of Brentwood for a larger territory. So that's one way this can go deeper though. And I'll come back to this piece, Jackie, is using her home. Many of the folks watching and listening today, their office is in one town, but they focus in the town next door where their home is. You can use your home. You just have to hide the address. And here's an example of that. It's called service area business. And it's different than, oops, one sec. You'll notice the difference here. So coming back to Gina, there's a mm -hmm. pin on the map and there's yeah. an address showing Got coming it. to Ron. There's no pin. There's no address. There's just the area that he serves. 
which is many cities. Very he, cool, dude. He ranks in Concord, California, where his home is. Google knows it's his house, but they've mm-hmm. hidden the address. His office is in Walnut Creek. So it's a, it's a great question, Tristan, because a lot of folks here have that same issue. But wait a second. My office is in downtown Toronto, but I live in Burlington, exactly. whatever. Okay. So what I'd love to do is deconstruct Gina's profile. You've seen Gina ranking in multiple searches, not just for real estate agents in Pleasanton, but top real estate agents. And it's not because of production. It's not because of how prolific she is. It is because of how this was built. And that's why this is so valuable. So I'd love to just walk through this from step to step. Man, that'll help us out a lot. Awesome. And by the way, if I didn't mention at the beginning, which I didn't think I did, at the end of our call, I'll put up a, a link that folks can go to. It's optimized five forward slash lab coat. And if you go there, you can book a 30 minute meeting with us. It's free. And we will go through your profiles and show you the gaps and how to make them better. Okay, awesome. So right off the bat, like I mentioned with Tim, you all have a Google business profile or should have one. And if you do, you're going to put your face up there, obviously, because if I met Gina and I Googled her, I'd want to say, yes, that's the woman I met at the open house. But when I click on the image, there isn't one, there is many. And Google sees these as assets. So if I'm standing in the middle of Pleasanton and I Google realtors near me, Gina has 200 assets attached to this profile that are pulling me to, to her profile on Google Maps. So again, there's two search types here. There's Gina Piper, and then there's real estate agents in Pleasanton. And this is the mechanism to show up or to get on both. That's something that Dan Carabello, right, who is on page one in Zillow, he will never be in the map for real estate agents. If I click more businesses, it opens Google Maps. These are Google profiles. Dan will never be here until he gets his own Google profile. He doesn't have one, okay? So Gina has many images pulling you towards her on the map. She has clearly hyper-focused on Google reviews, not Zillow reviews. In fact, I don't see Zillow over here. I don't see Yelp. I don't see other review platforms. I have to scroll down to get those, but this is staring me in the face. So there's three fundamental pieces about Zillow or about Google reviews that I want to share with you today. And they're very simple and I very compelling, especially the third one. The first one is, because this is the first thing I see when I search for her, that Mm -hmm. is social proof. And you've all heard that. I'm not searching around for her reviews. It's coming up as soon as I look at her. So it's staring me in the face. That's number one. Number two, more five-star Google reviews means higher ranking on Google. It's It's not the only piece, but it's a main piece to rank on the search engine that everybody uses to search for anything. Nobody says, everyone says you should Google her. They don't say you should Bing her. You should Yahoo her. That doesn't happen, right? All of the search is being done on Google. And so she's going to rank higher on Google Maps. Very true. Here is the secret piece to Google reviews that most people don't know about. I've changed my search query to top real estate agent in the East Bay. Or let's even make this top real estate agent in Pleasanton, California. When I get to the Google three pack and I click more businesses, these are ads. These will swap out. These are not, these are organic. Mm. You have all been told. I have been told Tristan, all of us have been told for 15 years to create content online, to write blogs every day, put out content. And the point is not only to provide great information to our consumers, but it is also to rank, right? That if you wrote a blog every day about luxury real estate in Pleasanton, that one day someone will Google luxury real estate in Pleasanton and your blog will pop up first. However, note that I did not search for a real estate agent in Pleasanton. I searched for the top. And the first organic result was Doug Bunes. And they pulled out this Google review because someone literally put the word top in the review. So (laughs) as I scroll you'll start to notice that Google is finding language, Michael Swift. And on top of it, he's a really nice person. He's always on top of everything. Even synonyms, they are absolutely best, which is a synonym to the word top in this search uh, uh, query. So 
Google is reading your reviews and Google is looking for the words. They're looking for organically stuffed keywords that are put into the reviews. And here's the key piece to this. You do not need to tell your consumers or your, your great customers to say certain words. Google's so creepy, it figures out the words and what they're saying and will match it to the query. Just let them write. And that is the most valuable content you can have in terms of SEO and ranking on Google. Okay. I like that, man. Are there any tactics for asking for reviews? Some people uh, want to see what, what strategies you have. Yeah, I can share them right now. Uh, there's lots. I'll give you the, the top sort of three. And mm -hmm. one of them is what not to do. So if you have a Google business profile, there's a link in the back end, just like with Zillow and other platforms that you can send someone that link and they'll write the review. Mm -hmm. um, the key is actually pretty simple. When you ask for a review, do not ask for a review on Google, Zillow, and Yelp. Then you'll get none. You're more likely just ask them for Google first and get the review on Google, right? Okay. Because once they try Zillow and they go through that cumbersome process of having to validate a property and create an account, oftentimes they give up and then they don't want to do it anymore. Um, also, don't ask for a lot. Just say, hey, Joe, if it was an email, you'd say, hey, Joe, you bought a house for me last year. I hope you're enjoying your new home in, in Pleasanton. Can you click this link and just say a few words on Google? It would be really meaningful to me. Thank you. You don't need to go into a whole diatribe of your business and why. Make it really simple. So these are more not to do's than what to do's. So mm -hmm. ask for it in one place, Google. Do it with the link. Um, make it simple. And the third one is, is don't text them the link. Email it to them. If you email it to them, they're more likely to access it from a computer and then they don't have to log in to Google because everything is remembered on the computer. If they do it on their phone, they have to remember their password and they often won't remember that. So better to send it by email. So those are three. There's a lot of other things you can do. If we got some time, we can cover that as well as we go through this. So if you're building out your, yeah. Any other, anything else popping up yet, Tristan? No, man, I think, I think that's key because uh, what you said is make it short also the request mm -hmm. nobody wants to read a book about why they should review you I, right. i'll stop in the first sentence i'll be like i'm not reviewing this person exactly <laughs> exactly it defeats the purpose you yeah, got it you got it Thanks, okay man. so top down lots of images lots of reviews and she's got a process to get reviews uh, gene is a client of ours full disclosure she has a process to get reviews as I scroll down, she is posting here. Look, this was posted three hours ago. And a lot of folks don't realize you post to Google the way you would post to any social media. She's mm. posting here regularly. Google wants to see posts. Now, this isn't the same as social media. It doesn't go out to a network. And the traction on posts in terms of people clicking on them and read them is quite low. But Google wants to see it. Google loves it. And it shows that your profile is active to Google. So post to your Google profile as often as possible. Once a week is the minimum. You can manually attach all of your socials to a Google business profile. All of her socials are attached here. Come back to Tim. He has all of his socials attached. Come back to Jackie. She has one attached. This can be done manually and it is technical. It's not just for the consumer to be able to click on all these and land on some of her social pages. Google sees that Gina Piper name Address, phone number, NAP is the acronym. It's the most important SEO fundamental to ranking is that the name, address, and phone number, and that's going to be part of business citations, which I'll get to in a minute, is matching in as many places as possible. They're also matching on all of these social profiles. So everything is working together from a search engine optimization perspective. I like that, man. Scrolling down, notice that Gina has products and these are not her listings and that is by design because sometimes you don't have a listing but everybody on the call today always has products always have products which are home seller consultations home seller uh, home buyer consultations property value analysis every google profile needs products not just because it looks good but because Google sees it and they need to be linked back to the website. That's called a backlink. And then finally, as I scroll down further, like Tim, you'll notice on every Google profile, even on Jackie's, I can ask Jackie a question. 
Very few people ask questions on Google profiles, but That's the cool. profiles that rank the highest typically do have questions on them. And when you read these questions, I think you can see these are likely asked by the business themselves of themselves. This has been treated as an FAQ, right? So, and this is perfectly fine. It's compliant. Google loves it. It's all data to provide to the consumer, right? And when you're thinking about what we refer to as evergreen products, evergreen questions, for those who aren't marketing folks and might not be sure what that means, these questions are evergreen, meaning that they can stay up there. They can stay and they're always relevant. So a question would not be, hey, what's going to happen in the market in 2024? That's That will change in 2025. So it's no longer an evergreen question. But how long will it take to sell my home or what needs to stay when I sell my home? Those are answers you can give that can be generic enough that they can stay up and they're always relevant. If I was talking to a mortgage person, I wouldn't put what's a good interest rate. Right, that wouldn't be a good question to answer. So breaking it down again from the top to the bottom, you have a Google business profile, lots of images, lots of reviews, focused on Google, everything connected to your website, posting regularly, all of your social channels, uh, evergreen products, Q&A, and then I may have skipped over a biography as well. All of this dovetails into business citations. So if we're coming, sort of stepping back for a minute about originally what we were breaking our conversation up into, it was three pieces, mm -hmm. Google business optimization, reviews, which we've just talked about, and then business citations. And I talked about the NAP, Tr Tristan, name, address, phone, matching in as many places as possible. I, like I want that. you to see I uh, what has been done with Gina's name, address, and phone number. Yeah, I want to see that, man. So notice that Gina's name isn't just on, and address and phone number isn't just on Google. It's all over the internet. It's in about 70 different places online. And a lot of these places, <laughs> yeah, this is called business citation syndication. If you look at it and you think, well, who's going to go to 8coupons.com looking for a realtor? Probably nobody, but the search engines do. When I say to Google, I need a realtor in Pleasanton, Google sees Gina's Google profile and then looks at all of these other citations and sees that she matches in 60 or 70 different places online. It's online credibility. So she has been syndicated. Now, Jackie's business name is just her first and last name. This is her name, address, and phone number. That's her NAP. When I scan her business name, address, and phone number, you'll notice that online, her phone number is associated to different businesses. I know, and you guys know, that Byerly Properties is her last name. So it's the same person, but the bots don't know that. The bots mm. just see that her Google profile is matched, phone number is matched to a different business at a different address, and they don't like it. She lacks the online credibility. So Google doesn't like that that information is wrong, or there's all this disparate information across the internet. Oh, interesting, man. I didn't know this part. Yeah. So this is this is done. This is one of the things that we do. When we meet with somebody, we run the scan. We look at where they're called online. And running software, business citation software, is what gets that information locked, synced, cleaned up, and it stays that way. It can't change when you run that software. It can't be altered. Because because we all know agents move from brokerage to brokerage sometimes often. Mm -hmm. And that means their address, sometimes their phone number, or even their name. Scott Vancey at Compass, Scott Vancey at Keller Williams, that's a name. It keeps changing. So you want that information to match and be as right in as many places as possible. I like that. I like that. And yes, this is recorded. I think Jake will put up a link in a little bit so you can go to our YouTube channel and watch it there as a replay. Uh, there's a quick question that pertains to reviews. Yeah. People are posting reviews at the consumer and it's not showing up. Oh, yeah. why, what, what could be a reason that's not happening? It's a great question. So uh, Google's review platform has become more and more, they've become more stringent in terms of monitoring reviews to make sure that they're real. Mm -hmm. And the person who asked the question, I'm sure the review that you received was a legitimate review. However, 
Google's monitoring them and sometimes their, their, their spam bots catch a review because they think they're not true. So there's some rules around reviews and I'll tell you what to do to get that review back. The reviews have to be from a customer. They can't be from other realtors or a title person or a mortgage person, a partner. They have to be a customer. Having said that, you are all consultants. There are many folks that you have worked with who may or may not have purchased a home yet, but you have consulted mm -hmm. them. You've brought them on tours. You've brought them to see homes. So we would consider them a customer, but we're dealing with Google and Google sets the rules. So it's got to be a customer review. If it isn't, that may be one reason. If it's a review from overseas, that can be a challenge as well. And I say that because there's a lot of companies that claim to do what we do, which is we do all of this work for folks, but they get reviews for you. Nobody can get reviews for a realtor except for the realtor. I mean, your assistant can help you send out an email blast to all of your happy clients to write you a review, but the reviews need to be true. If there's ever a review on your platform that's not true and Google sees it, they start to scrutinize all the reviews and will often not show a review that is true. So follow the rules around getting reviews and make sure that they're all true and from customers. Now, having said that, assuming that this is a real review and it should have shown up, what you do is you go, and I can't show you exactly, it's a little bit of a, a clunky process, but in the back end of Google, so this is the back end of the Google business profile that you have access to and only you do. You can click on support and on the support channel, you can go through the process. Uh, uh, you'll just type in, it'll say, what's the problem? You type in review and it will say um, review not showing up and you go through the process. And what they want from you is, it's a ticket that you file through Google. They want the email address that the review came from and the rough time frame that the review was written. So like you could say between July 1st and 5th, and they will go and find the review and they'll say, okay, we'll let it come back or, or we won't let it come back. We just don't believe it's true. And you can't really fight them at that point. You're dealing with you know, folks overseas working opposite hours to us. They won't dialogue mm -hmm. much with you, but you have a better than 50% chance on getting that review to come back. I like that. and and. Some of the questions are very specific. So you can definitely ask Scott. He's going to put up the link soon where you can just meet him after for 30 minutes and then ask him whatever you want. And then he can help you. He'll say, hey, you know what? We can't help you. Uh, but the point is he'll help you do something or at least realize that he can't help you. Yes, uh, please. Uh, just to echo what Tristan said, if you can see at the bottom. Oh, I probably didn't share my uh, this one second. I'm going to yeah, share no the, uh, the uh, presentation here really quick. So at the bottom of the, of the slide, you'll see optimize five. So it's the number five.com forward slash mm -hmm. code. If you go there, go to that link, plug that in. The calendar will open up. There are uh, six of us available to meet with you. And when we do these one-on-one uh, -on -one presentations, they're not presentations, they're evaluations of your profile. So we will have done the work already before we meet. We will have run a business scan. We'll have looked at your citations. We'll have taken apart your Google profile and we will show you everything and all of the gaps. And of course, if you want to hire us, we've got baked in discounts and that kind of stuff that we've worked out because we're working with lab code agents and, um, and I can talk about that as well in the presentation, but but that that thirty minutes and Tristan knows this. That thirty minute presentation is free. It's not a pitch. It's twenty nine minutes about you and your profiles, showing the gaps, how to make it better. And there's a one minute pitch if you want to hire us, but you don't have to. It's just good information. We can answer yeah. those questions as well. That's it's very true, man. You did you did show everything to me, and I was like, wow, that's. <laughs> can you yeah. help? My last my question at the end was like, can you help me? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. So that was that was good. Um, Scott, what do you think the biggest opportunity is for real estate agents to use Google this year? As you, because you you've seen it change; it's continually changing. What's our biggest opportunity right now? Yeah. So let me get back here. Um. So at the end of the day, no matter how much marketing you do. Um, and all the lead gen, they're all going to Google you and you know that. And so mm -hmm. they need to see an optimized Google profile. They need to see that you need to be able to rank. 
in your area. And that's challenging. If you're in the city of Seattle, where there's 25 million real estate agents, it's hard to rank, but you need to at least compete. And so you've, many of you have heard of Google local service ads, Google screened. There's all of these different types of ads. There's obviously just standard Google ads. Those require time, investment, resources, and a strategy. This is your Google opportunity. It's Google business profile. It's all we talk about. It trumps all of your other profiles. It's a precursor to all lead gen that the best of you shows up when someone looks for you. So this is the opportunity. And here's the great thing. I started this business in February of 2020. Think about what ha what was going on. <laughs> Think yeah. about in terms of timing of starting a business. I started a business and two weeks later, the world basically fell apart. And it was a boon to my business because the online brand profile of a realtor never became more valuable. The net net, most real estate agents still are not doing this well. That's why this is the opportunity for Google. Mm, I like that. Yeah, I think it's just going to be more and more important, dude. Uh, yeah. Everyone, everyone goes to Google for everything. It's still the most visited website in the world. Yep. And YouTube is number two, which they own as well. They own as well. Exactly. So it's all I like tied in. I got more to show, but I want to be mindful of time and questions, Tristan. Well, let's see. Uh, you guys want to go for another, what, 10 minutes or so? Or you guys want to ask questions? What do you want him to do? I'll let you all decide. Should he go for 10 more minutes or should we ask questions? Okay, keep going, dude. All right, keep going. Uh, okay. 10 more cool. minutes. Here we go. Let me share this real quick. This is what I wanted to get to. You can see the slide deck, right? Yep, I got you. Awesome. The slide deck. So, so I just want to give everybody some best practices really quickly. I hope I've made it clear you need to have a Google profile. Do not name the Google profile anything that you want. The Google's business profile name is your business name. Here's the thing. It feels like you can do what you want with it because it's free. It's the most valuable branding mechanism you can possibly have. It's got to be respected because Google suspends profiles all the time. We get calls from people all the time saying, I had 100 Google reviews and they suspended our profile. And we looked at it and it said, Scott Vancey, a number one agent in Venture, <laughs> California. And that's a, that's a, and Google approves these by a bot and then they audit and then they delete them. So uh -oh. create a Google business profile, optimize it the way that we talked about and make sure your name, address and phone number is matching in as many places as possible. You have a Facebook business page. I bet you all of you do. If your Google business profile name is Scott Vancey, a comma realtor, name Facebook that too. Name as many places online as you can, the exact same name as your Google profile. Get as many Google reviews as possible. Make sure they're real and you have a, a process to get them, right? It could be once a month. I know there's always best times to ask for a review, like the day someone gets the keys, it might feel like the best time. But at the end of the day, I bet you there's a lot of agents on this call right now who've been at it for some time, have a lot of happy customers that they worked with five, 10, 15 years ago. On a Sunday morning, you could send out 150 emails in about 45 minutes asking for those folks to write you reviews. And so mm -hmm. it's worth it. Respond. And if you don't know if you don't know how to create a, a quick email, just go to ChatGPT or Google Bard, and say, "Hey, can you create an email for me? I'm a real estate agent that's asking for reviews and make it authentic or personal." I love that's that. It. I love that. I posted to Instagram our Instagram uh, business page two days ago, Tristan, and I just what we do every time we make quick video. We send it off to somebody to add the actual verbiage to the video, like uh, to show the, the words on the screen. Mm -hmm. And then I go to ChatGPT and I just say, ChatGPT, write an Instagram real post with hashtags about why reviews are so important on Google. And they write the perfect, I mean, no editing. It's perfect. That's good. I like it, dude. It's just getting better and better. Exactly. Can you explain really quick? Because some people may miss this and don't understand it, uh, but respond to bad reviews yes. why 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 would that help or how would that help it's great i'm so glad you asked let me i thought i had um i knew what i was doing here so let me just do this real quick okay you can see my live uh screen the yeah. okay cool so if i go to gina and i click on her reviews i see the responses from her 
to the review. That's her reply. So there's two things. Google's reading this content. They're not reading this content. So you can't, don't make your reply. I loved being the top agent in, that doesn't work. But Google's reading the content of their review. So that's important. They do see Google that you did reply. And that is a notch on all of the ways that you would optimize your profile. So that's one reason that you reply to it. The second reason is that if it's a negative review, it has been proven time and time again, negative reviews are neutralized by amicable responses. And like I said at the beginning, when I go to my chiropractor, I filter by negative reviews. So if I wanna work with the best chiropractor in Pleasanton, California, that's my search. I've got all of these chiropractors here. Let's pick one. I've never done this search before. I'll go to the joint. And so they're called the Joint Chiropractic. I'm actually going to get their Google profile to come up. One sec. And I'm going to click on their reviews. And I'm going to filter by lowest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And here's a bad review. And they've said all of this content and the response is, hi, Josh, we appreciate the time you took to write this. We sincerely apologize while we do our best. And the point of this is if you end it with call us, we want to make this better. We want to do this right for you. I read that and I think this is a business that cares about their clientele. Mm. They took the time to write it. Now, I realize that if I was a realtor, there's sometimes legal stuff that can come into play and that you have to remain silent on certain stuff or what have you. But a amicable response to a bad review will neutralize that negative review. And then of course, you should bury it with so many five-star reviews, it becomes a moot point. <laughs> that's, that's the best part. That's probably the best part. Yeah, exactly. That's so yeah, funny, dude. All right, let me get back to this. All righty. So respond to the reviews, the bad ones. This is outside of Google, but it's just something that everyone who's in our world talk has been talking about. You are all posting. I bet if I Googled everybody who joined the call today, I look at your Facebook business page and I look at your Instagram business page and you're probably posting regularly to both. And then I would look at LinkedIn and not only have you not posted to LinkedIn, but you probably have double the audience. So LinkedIn is an untapped opportunity. 77% of LinkedIn users are over the age of 30 and they make more than 75 grand a year. If you live where Tristan and I live, it doesn't matter if they make 75 grand a year. I mean, they're still probably not buying a home, but through yeah. most of the US, they're in the category. They're the right folks. And that's a uh, an audience that you have access to. They should see regular content from you on LinkedIn. So it's just an opportunity. I love that, man. That's a really good, that's a really good point you made at the end. Thank you. Um, what I'll just run through these real quick last slide and then we'll maybe any other questions. Does that sound good? Good. Let's go. Awesome. When you set up your Google profile, they used to send you mailers. Now they do video verification. So be prepared to be in your office showing somebody on a, on a, a Google meet your office. Okay. So that's how they 50% of the time, we're going to want to set up your Google profile if you don't have one. Accounts are suspended. We talked about that when your Google name doesn't match what's on your website. So mm -hmm. don't make your name something crazy. Just make it who you are in your business, right? Okay. And make sure that name is on your website. Google reviews have been suppressed more than ever. We talked about that. Make sure they're real reviews and they're, they're from real customers. They're not from partners. I added this in recently. I am getting lots of our current clients who have been solicited by other folks who do what we do, mm -hmm. telling them that they're going to get them to the top of search. Nobody can make that guarantee. Do not fall for that type of guarantee. They are not Google. They are not the algorithm. And if they do that for you and they get you to the top of search, that means they can't work with anybody else, I guess, in Seattle because they got you to the top. They don't know what everyone else is doing. So don't ever fall for that. Just something I want to mention. Here's the last thing. Special services. And actually, let's go back to the live because I want to show you guys this. This is something that has been so valuable for our customers. I might want to work with the top real estate agent in Pasadena, 
California. That's my shirt. I actually live right next door to Pasadena, so I thought I would pick that out. It's telling me Ramiro, Eva, and Jerry. Now I'm going to change this to top Spanish speaking real estate agent in Pasadena. Now, one of those people have been replaced by someone else who actually speaks Russian. So what's my point? You all do other things. You all have things that others don't. Some of you are really focused on seniors. You have the seniors designation. Some of you speak different languages. Some of you have um, uh, experience that you can offer that is not identified by just simply looking at the picture. That can be built into Google Business Profile. It can be built in, in special categories, all of the other things that you do. So if you are a senior specialist, if you do speak multiple languages, if you have certain uh, um, designations that other agents don't, people mm -hmm. will look for that. They won't look for the designation. They'll look for it in real world speak. I need a real estate agent in Pasadena that speaks Spanish or mm -hmm. Mandarin. Mandarin in, in Pasadena. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Mandarin. So that's what you're going to get. So that's just languages, but there's other things that you do. So think about that as you're building out your Google business profile. And then again, the offer to everybody is meet with us. We'll go through this with you. Free 30 minute consultation. We could talk through that and, and, uh, and, and give you some good guidance. All right. I'll put up the link one more time and then. Uh, and then we'll go from there. Scott, this was great, man. I loved it. This was different than last time too. So I, I learned some things here. Awesome. I'm glad. Well, the back and forth helped too, Tristan, because you had some really good questions. Yeah. I, I really, for, for us, when I'm looking at what I need to do next is I need to do when you showed, I think the, the lady from Pleasanton where she had a lot of pictures of properties. I'm like, the more we upload, I'm assuming we can also name the pictures we upload so they're relevant to the areas too, so that when people search, that pops up too. It's great. So that it will show it on the picture, which is true, uh, but the metadata isn't read by Google for search. So just keeping that in mind, because some people think that. So just setting that, setting that uh, expectation on that. I like this, man. All right. Scott, awesome. thank you. Everyone on this, if you clicked on the link, let us know you're on. Yes, yes, yes. I want yeses and nos. It's fine. Let us know if you're on. And then while you're doing that and we're seeing who jumped in, Scott, I want to know what we can talk about next that we didn't cover this time that has to do with this Google world. Yeah, that's a great question. Well, um, there's optimizing Google business profile and putting together that strategy, not only for it to look great, but there's the ongoing effort mm -hmm. or what a lot of us love to do these days, because we're dealing with so much stuff online and computers, et cetera, is automating this yeah. sort of automation in place. And that's the business citations, regular posting, all that stuff. Oh, I right. like the automation piece. Kind of like what happens after. Totally. Exactly. Because okay. yeah, go ahead. I like, okay, so either that, mm -hmm. the what happens after I've set up my business page and how to continue to grow. Right. And or how to get more reviews and best practices for reviews. I would love, we could do a whole review class. I like both of those. So that means we have two next. We'll, we'll decide which one's next, but how to get more reviews and how to optimize my reviews. And then automation and growth. I like both, dude. I like both. Scott, thank you so much. This was very valuable. Thank awesome. you, everyone. I saw quite a few people jump on. So thanks for this, buddy. Thanks for doing awesome. it from Lake Tahoe, too. Yeah, of course. Happy to. Thank you, Tristan. Thanks, everybody. Hope to see you all again. Bye-bye. Right, yeah. Bye. Bye.